Squirrel sound to you, or perhaps squirrel cottage pie or squirrel haggis. All could be coming to a menu near you if you live near Exmoor. The Exmoor Squirrel Project is encouraging restaurants to serve grey squirrel and landowners to set live traps in a bid to humanely cull them while reintroducing red squirrels. This is all about the red squirrel. The project says non-native greys are wreaking havoc on UK woodlands by attacking trees for food and stripping them, which eventually leads to tree death. With no wild population of red squirrels left in the southwest west of mainland England, the native red squirrel population is down to around 120,000 compared to 3 million greys. The organisation is encouraging people to eat rather than waste the grey squirrels and plans to introduce them into restaurants in the Exmoor area. Love to know what you think about this. Do you say no? You can have, you know, beef pie, pork lasagna, but squirrel haggis is over the line. Vine at bbc.co.uk is the email. Please include your phone number. Text us 88291. Send us a WhatsApp message 08000 288 We'll speak in the moment to uh, the owner of a restaurant who does already serve squirrel. But first, Nick Hosgood is Wildlife and Woodland Management Officer for Exmoor Squirrel Project. So you can tell us what these grey squirrels are doing then. Yeah, definitely. So um, I think the, the big point we've got is that we just don't want to waste the animals from a process that needs needs to happen. So we are completely uh, supported by the Forestry Commission, Exmoor National Park, in reducing the numbers of these grey squirrels, as you said, aren't native. And they're causing so much damage to the woodland that we have um, and all these amazing planting programmes that are happening. In 20 years' time, if we don't address the squirrel problem now, it will all be for nothing. Um, and there's just so much effort towards uh, reducing them so that one day we can have our red squirrel back. Because Exmoor hasn't seen a red squirrel for 60 years. And there's a lot of people, many of your listeners will remember them. Um, and my son's three. And I just think it'd be amazing that he could have red squirrels back on Exmoor within his lifetime. So, so at the moment, the grey squirrels, they do have a good go at the trees apart from anything else, don't they? Oh, definitely, yeah. So they so they'll test the tree one year, then they'll come back. They stress it basically into producing more energy, and then they'll come back and strip all the bark off, get to the get to the nutrition beneath. Um, but that is basically like taking our skin off and exposing us to infection, and eventually they'll die. Good grief! So, how are you culling them first of all? Um, so at the moment we're doing uh, traps. Um, so it's all all humane. There's uh, it's in a big effort to make sure there's no pain, danger or anything. All they know is lovely bit of peanut or some peanut butter. Um, and then we'll deal with them. And then as a, as a result then, instead of um, just throwing them or wasting them, we're really trying to respect what them, because we, we don't have anything against the individual animal, as it were. We're just trying to push the... Uh, towards a population for the betterment. Um, so that's why we're trying to eat them. And, okay. I mean, and what's your, if, if you, if, can you give an example? Are you supplying recipes or anything like that? Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not a culinary sort of expert. But I mean, I, I've done it when I was when I was a young lad, sort of shot a few squirrels and then oh, and then lad. did it when I was younger. But I mean, it's why waste it? Um, we're donating them to animal sanctuaries as well um, and local pubs that will be able to make decent meals. Do grey squirrels taste better than red squirrels? Oh, well, we, oh, well I hope no one's ever found out, so I hope no one eats red squirrels. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's only the greys that we're really targeting. We really want those those reds back native doing really well because they evolved with our landscape so they they don't do as much damage they're meant to be here whereas these the, the greys just it, they don't add to a sense of symbiosis no i mean I've, I've talked to someone before who who owns this bit of forest in in devon who said that mm -hmm. it's being destroyed by the squirrels so i completely understand what you're saying and they said it was just just horrifying what goes on the they were introduced were they at some point was it from america or or what that's it, yeah. So uh, someone thought it was a really good idea. Um, and I think I think all the great squirrels we have, like the three or four million that you mentioned, they all come from eight to 12 original ones from America that were brought over. But in itself, those that, that group of squirrels were from two different areas. And one of them had squirrel, had squirrel pox um, or carried a bacteria that didn't affect the great squirrels, came over here, if they ate off one place and a red squirrel jumped in there, 
it, the bacteria just killed them within three, wow. four days, perhaps. Um, and that's why they're, they've just decimated. So what we're doing is nothing new. People have been managing gray squirrels for a long time. But we're just at such a, a big turning point now that we're in danger of losing the uh, our reds losing our woodland and that's why we're trying to push education so we're taking it in schools to teach uh, children that are quite ignorant about red squirrels because they just see greys um, so we're trying to educate them we're taking people for guided walks um, and this is where we're looking for volunteers as well is um, to go for walks tell us where the squirrels are tell us what damage they've been doing so that we can build um, more information more data and we can continue this for as many years as it takes to get our reds back. Let me get before you go, Nick. Let me just bring in Helen in Swindon, who's rung in, and you, 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 you're a bit alarmed by all this, Helen. Yes, I am. Yes, hello, Jeremy. Hello. You're concerned what that we we shouldn't be trying to kill animals to solve a problem we've created. That's exactly it. It's you know grey squirrels, Canada geese, muntjac deer. All of these were introduced by humans. Um, and now that they've thrived and they're successful, it just seems that, you know, the, the, the go-to solution is always just to kill. And I don't really understand why. There's, there's other solutions. Nick, why are we always trying to kill animals? Well, that's really interesting. So there, there is um, efforts in the future that we won't have to kill them. So there's a lot of contraceptives that are coming out so that we can um, sterilise uh, the grey squirrels, essentially, so that they can live out their natural life, um, but they won't be reproducing. Right. So, uh, so there's gene drive, or there's a contraceptive that we can put into feed. Um, but I think it comes down to it's our responsibility for our landscape. Now, muntjac they they have their issues, but the grey squirrels are decimating our woodlands. And um, I think we need to understand that woodlands that make up an amazing part of our beautiful landscape, they're by design. We planted them. We cr we crafted from them we managed them it's a, it's a culture that's been lost a little bit but it's our responsibility to manage that landscape and keep it beautiful so everyone can enjoy it but unfortunately they, those grey squirrels and like i said i no one takes joy in killing an individual no no one, well but it, it's for the betterment of a population and it really is our responsibility because like your caller said we messed up it's all our fault. All right. But we, we have a choice to make. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Nick Hosgood of the Exmoor Squirrel Project. I just want to hear more about what you can eat if you decide to dine on squirrel. Paul Wedgwood is the chef and owner of Wedgwood Restaurant in Edinburgh. And you do have squirrel pie, do you, Paul? Uh, we do, yeah. We've been serving squirrels since 2008. Do you, and, and what's the actual name on the menu? Because sometimes these names are almost incomprehensible. Oh, for the it'd be a squirrel trapper's pie if we would if we okay. would put the, the, that one on. So and, and no one's no one said to you, wait, mate, that that crosses the line. No, uh, we've only had positive feedback. Um, we've had a, a gentleman flew in from Switzerland, especially just to eat the grey squirrel. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> did, give me an idea of which bits of the squirrel you serve. Is it the back legs? The, well, it's the whole thing. You get you do you get most of the meat from the back legs, but they. With the, the work that they do, they're obviously a bit tough. They take a lot of cooking. So what I do is I'll use take the back legs off and just spin that meat in a food processor and then use that to protect the loin. Um, so it's a complete hot, like nose to tail with the squirrel. We, we make uh, haggis from the, from the offal. Um, yeah, so we use, we use every part of it. And I'm guessing that the, I mean, leaving aside the rights and wrongs of culling squirrels, for you, it's, it is a, almost a free source of meat, isn't it? Um, well, it's, it's, it's definitely cost effective. Um, we have to buy them from our, our, our game dealer. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're really cheap. And if the, the, the sort of Exmoor project goes ahead, they, I think they should maybe consider do donating them to, to local restaurants. Now, which local which re restaurant wouldn't take up free proteins? Well, you say that we had a, a story about 10, 15 years ago where a pup had announced it was serving squirrel pie and animal rights activists threatened to firebomb it. And the pub owner said, wait, uh, we're already serving beef, <laughs> veal, rabbit, pork and everything else. And, and they were told, no, this is this crosses the line. Well, I mean, the, if squ squirrel meat is like completely ethical, it's green, it's low, low in fat, totally free range. And if you think um, the the greenhouse gases that, that emissions from farming cattle, it's actually better to eat squirrel than it is beef. And could you, if you were eating it but you didn't know which meat it was, would you would you guess, or does it taste a bit like lamb or what? Um, it tastes a little bit like. Um, 
sort of the high, the back legs of a chicken or rabbit. You could you could easily mistake them for, for either of those two. Okay, thank you so much, Paul. No problems. There we go, Paul Wedgwood of the the self named Wedgwood Restaurant.